Alright, so now it's time to talk about peer review. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what peer review is, why you should do it, how it's helpful, how to get the most out of it, uh, and then we're going to do an activity. So the lecture is going to be shorter this time than it was last time. Yay! Um, but your activity is going to take a little bit longer. So let's go ahead and start. So tackling peer review, these are some of the basics. Alright, so what is peer review? Well, you might have done this in high school, it's pretty standard. Uh, you get into peers or groups, you swap papers, um, because everyone should come with a prepared printed draft to swap. Uh, you read each other's papers, you give feedback to each other. And you use that feedback to make your paper better. That's the basics. Now let's talk about why we do it. Because some people think it's pointless. Um, they don't want to do it. And that makes them very bad partners. Uh, and so I want to kind of um, make you understand why we do it so that you'll take it more seriously. So why do we do peer review? Um, one of the reasons is your brain knows what you meant. So when you read over your own paper, if there's an error, your brain is going to make those connections and you might have an error and not even notice because your brain knows what you meant. So this is some biology, some psychology, neurology stuff going on here. Um, there, are, there are things that your brain is not going to be as good at catching as someone else's is. Uh, just because you're, you're familiar with your own work and they aren't. So something that you could read your paper a hundred times and miss it every time, someone else might see it on the very first read. And again, I know this because it's happened to me with drafting. So yeah, this is a biological fact. Um, here's some examples of weird things that your brain does. I want you to read this paragraph. So that's a little trippy, right? Um, the, the words are not spelled correctly, but we can read it pretty easily because this is what our brain is doing. It's recognizing things. Um, and this is what your brain does when you miss your own errors. Here's another one. Which of these words are spelled correctly? It's the first one and the last one, and all the ones in the middle are wrong, but it takes you a second to get that. So again, this is what happens when you look at your own paper. Here's another fun one. I'll give you a second for this. How many legs does this elephant have? You figured it out? You got a number? Whatever your number is, it's wrong. <laughs> Because this is an impossibility. Um, the neurological explanation of this is that this is a 2D drawing that your brain tries to convert into 3D, and it can't be done. Um, you can look this explanation up on Google if you want to. You put in elephant optical illusion. It explains it in sciencey terms that uh, are better than what I can tell you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this. The legs, you can just say it has no legs, basically. And this one, is it moving? It's not. This is a flat object. This is something that I just copied off of Google Images. But it looks like it's moving because your brain is doing weird things when it looks at it. And again, this is another one you can look up the explanation of why it looks like it's moving um, online, but it's not. So these are weird things that your brain does. So no, it's not that you're not good enough to catch your errors. It's that, it's that your brain is just primed to not catch them because, again, you are looking for certain things, um, whereas someone else doesn't know what you meant, and so they're going to have an easier time doing it. They could look, uh, you know, if, if we're pretending this is your draft, 
they would be able to look at it and not see it moving. All right, so another reason why we do peer reviews, simple enough, two heads are better than one. Um, so you might be struggling with ways to open your essay, with ways to end it, with examples to bring up. And so if your partner looks at it, they might go, oh, you know what, you could talk about this. And then you go, hey, it's a great idea that I never thought of. Um, so even the best writers have people who are helping them. They have editors, they have friends in writing groups. Um, you know, Stephen King and John Grisham and, you know, these people who make millions of dollars off their books, they get help. They're not writing this completely on their own. So don't feel like you're such a good writer that you don't need help or that the fact that you need help means you're a bad writer. All of that is ridiculous. Everyone can benefit from peer review. So when we do the actual peer reviewing, here is what you need to be doing when you're the reader, meaning you're reading your peer review partner's paper. You want to read your partner's paper carefully. Give it some time. Um, you know, don't rush through it. So read slowly and carefully. And then give constructive feedback. So what does that mean? That means um, you want to point out errors that you see, but you also want to look at, you know, places where you feel like the essay wasn't as strong as it could have been, or where you got confused, or where you felt like they added stuff that didn't need to be in there. Those are the kinds of things that you want to say. Here's what you don't want to say. This is awful. It sucks. Now, I've never heard anyone say that in peer review. Um, so please continue to not say that. Most people know that that's a not appropriate thing to say. But here's another thing I hear a lot in peer review. It's great. It's fine exactly how it is. That's actually equally bad to saying it sucks. Why? Because you're not helping your partner at all. What you're saying is, it's great how it is. Don't do anything to it because I don't feel like reading it or putting any effort into helping you make it better. And so your partner is not getting any improvement, they're not getting any help, they're turning in something um, that's exactly as it was when you could have helped them make it better. So telling them it's awful and telling them it's great are equally bad. Um, which isn't to say that you can't say, oh, this is good. It's just you can't say, oh, this is good, don't change it. Don't, don't try and improve it. It's, it's perfect. That is usually just laziness on your part. So you want to really be trying, and again, like I said, the best writers still can use some help. So don't feel like, even if it's good, even if you're like, oh, this paper's so much better than mine, you can still help them make it better. So don't be afraid to critique someone else's paper. As the author, meaning your peer review partner has read your paper and they're talking to you about it, you want to be open and receptive. Don't think that your paper is so good that no one can possibly help you make it better. I've heard students say that and they're wrong. Um, so be open to whatever your partners say. Take the advice to heart. If you get some really good advice, you want to listen to that. You want to be like, yeah, that's a way for me to make my paper better. Now granted, um, sometimes you're going to get bad advice. Sometimes the person reading your paper uh, just is, is either through laziness uh, or just through maybe they don't understand the assignment themselves, something like that. Um, maybe they're giving you advice and you're like, oh, I don't really agree with that. You don't have to do everything your partners say. You want to take everything they say into consideration and apply what you think is going to make your paper better. So that means don't not use someone's advice because you're lazy. You know, someone gives you a good piece of advice and you're like, well, that can make my paper better, but I don't feel like doing it. That's not using peer review uh, for what it's meant for. But if someone says something and you really don't agree with it and you really don't think it's going to make your paper better, you don't have to do it. So what you do want to do is fix grammar errors. 
Um, so if there are things that your partner found that are errors, definitely fix that. Now sometimes, because your peer review partners are other students, they're not English teachers, they might say something is wrong and it's not. That happens. Um, again, don't freak out and be like, well then why am I doing peer review? Uh, if someone marks something on your paper and you're like, I don't know if that's wrong or not, that's the time to come ask me, which is really easy to do. Or, you know, again, you can go to the writing center and have a tutor there and look it over. But yeah, it's so easy for you to look at something that you're not sure about and just bring it up to me, show it to me, and ask. And I'll let you know whether you were right in the first place or whether your peer review partner was right. So that's what you want to do with those errors. Um, and again, like I said, good advice that you got during peer review, use it. Don't not do it and turn in the same draft to me that you let your partner read. Why? Because then you've just wasted your partner's time, you've wasted your time, and you've thrown away a better grade. So if that's what you choose to do, that's on you. But do it understanding that you're wasting everybody's time and you could have got a better grade and you didn't care enough to do it. So here is your activity. So on Blackboard, underneath this lecture, I've attached a copy of an essay. It's a sample essay. What I want you to do is print it. You've got to print this. Don't come in with something handwritten. So print out this essay. And then I want you to write your comments directly on the essay for, the, for number two in this activity. So what you're going to do is you're going to read through the sample essay carefully. It's not very long, so go slowly, read carefully. Now also, underneath the sample essay on Blackboard, I've attached a peer review sheet. This is the same sheet you're going to use to peer review each other's partner's papers um, when we do our peer review in class. So I want you to open that up. You don't have to print this one, but open it up and look at it and look at what it's asking you to look for with this paper. So you want to read the sample paper keeping those things in mind and you want to write directly on the paper. There are errors in this paper, so you want to look for typos, spelling and grammar problems, those kinds of things. But you also want to look for clarity. Are there places where the paper is too vague? where it needs to be more specific? Are there places where you feel like you're not getting the person's point? Or maybe um, the point should be made stronger? Are there places where you're like, oh, this didn't need to be here, this is saying too much? Um, you know, th that's what you want to look for. Because again, you want to think about what was the point of this assignment? Is this paper fulfilling that? Is every sentence and every paragraph adding to that? and succeeding in what the assignment asks for. So you want to write those things directly on the paper, and you want to think about how can this paper be better. Um, so again, what you might do, certainly you want to circle errors, um, but as far as like places that are confusing or need more clarity or those kinds of things, um, you want to mark that and maybe in the margin write what you think needs to be done. And then at the end, maybe give a sentence or two that just explains what can be done to make this paper better. So that's what you're doing for your activity. You're going to bring that in next class period. We're going to go over it uh, as a class and talk about it. And this is going to help you be ready for when we do our actual in-class peer review. Alright, so that's the end of our peer review lesson. And as always, I will see you next class.